helps if you're aware of it. There we go. Let's try it again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to the Lord's house as we celebrate on this Reformation Sunday observed. As we give thanks and praise to the Lord that we are truly saved by not our works, but by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We join together this morning the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 607.
Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a colony and servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before, God, before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against our enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first reading for this morning is from the for the Festival of Reformation is from Revelation to St. John chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what, kinds of, by, what, by what kind of law? By a law of works? No, by a law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Be At this time the choir will sing.
Will you please rise as we join together and sing our Alleluia in verse and for our gospel lesson. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time I invite the children forward for the children's message. Plenty of room. Yeah, there we go. All right. Very good. Well, I brought along something to help us this morning. Does anybody know what this game is called if it was a lot bigger? It's called ski ball. You ever play that? You got balls maybe a little bigger than this. Well, this, this little guy here is going to be our ball this morning because that's what came with the game. And if you look at it, you've got these outer rings here, but you also got this middle. You know what that's called? Well, no, it's a bullseye, right? It's a bullseye, right? It's the most points right there. If you get it in there, as a matter of fact, this thing counts up points too. I don't remember how it does. It doesn't matter. I don't think it's got batteries in it anymore either. But the point is, is that we're going to talk about sin this morning because unfortunately, you're supposed to bounce, and I'm not going to do it because it's going to go all over the place, but you're supposed to bounce this ball off and hopefully get it inside the little orange circle here, the bullseye. That's how you get the most points. Well, unfortunately, where do you think most of the little balls end up? Out here on the outside. You're right. Of course, I know you didn't say that, but I'm saying it for you. That's right. They ended up here on the outside, right? The least amount of points is right out here, and that's where most of them end up because it's the biggest one. Okay? That's why this little one's so small because that's worth like 100 points. Okay? So here I am, and I'm bouncing around, and I'm... You say, well, Pastor, what's that got to do with sin? Well, that's the point. Sin is missing the mark. This is perfection. This is perfect right here, right in the middle. Perfect. How many of you are perfect? Yeah, unfortunately, we're not. You're right. You're right. None of us are. I could ask everybody in the congregation, and no one would say they're perfect. Well, someone might say they're perfect, but they're, guess what? They're not telling us the truth. Because how do we know that? Because the Bible says what? Well, the Bible says we've... All, that's right, nobody's perfect. We've all sinned. That's what we just heard from Paul, that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? And so here we are, spending our lives trying to be what God's called us to be, perfect, and we do so only as Christians because of Jesus' death for us. Because we know that Jesus died so that I may now say before him, I'm sorry. When I sin, I'm sorry. We confess our sins. And so... God is the one who comes on and goes, I made it perfect just for you by sending Jesus so that we, even though we're going to miss the mark here, we're going to hit all these other targets, a part of it, he's the one who came along and put it right there in the middle and for you and for me. Yep, I know, just like it was going to do, right? So he does it just for us as Christians, but you know what? He did it for everybody because the Bible says, who did Jesus die for? He died for the whole that's right, died for the whole world. That's right, he did. And so this morning, as you're listening real closely to the rest of the sermon, we're going to talk about the fact that God loves us. That's why he sent Jesus, because he knows that we can't hit the bullseye, we can't hit the mark. We hit all over the other places because of sin, but his love for us allows us to know that Jesus was the perfect one, that he died and rose for us. All right, thank you for coming down. You guys can head back.
And we'll join together now in the singing of our hymn of the day, hymn number 656. Seated. Our text is our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For the works of the law, no, by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Reformation Sunday observed, we come together again around the Word. We are always around the Word. We have to be. We are the church. We are those that have been called by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have heard, as Paul says in Romans, and we have believed, and faith is ours because of Jesus. 
See, as Christians, we know what sin is. As I said in our children's message, it's missing the mark. Literally, that's what the word sin means. It's shooting at a target and missing completely. We are very good at it. We're accomplished at it. We are, and so you know very well, we are students of sin. It is what we are born into. It is the desires of our heart. It is the very being of who we are in this world. We have knowledge of it. We know it all too well. But as Christians, we are also knowledgeable of the fact that we are accountable to God. Remember when Potiphar's wife is enticing Joseph, Joseph's response to her is, how can I do this against God? Joseph understood whom sin was against. Because, of course, the question can be asked, who is without sin? The answer, sadly, is no one. None of us humans is without sin. We are always missing the mark. We are always desirous of that which we want. We're selfish. We're this, we're that, we're everything that the Bible says that we are when it comes to sin. But then we have to ask, who isn't subject to the law? Because remember, the verse starts out, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. And some people are quick to say, well, that's the Jewish people. Yes, they're under the law. Well, it's true. But so are the Gentiles. Because the law is written on our hearts. We know that it is wrong to do those things that the Ten Commandments say are wrong, even if we don't know what the Ten Commandments are. Now, I'd be hard-pressed, I think, to find someone who does not know at least some of the commandments. Because, again, they're written on our heart. But this is also why the law can't save us. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. Remember when you were in confirmation class and you learned about the three uses of the law, right? The curb, the mirror, and the rule. Well, that's it. The law shows us our sin. It's glaring. We get it. The law has no power to save because there's nothing in it that says, and now you're saved. It only says, you're a sinner. And I could stand up here and preach for as long as I could about the law, and you'd all feel terrible. Well, at least I hope so. But see, that's just it. The law doesn't save. It shows us who we are. Or even as Paul says, who we were. Thanks be to God. The knowledge of sin we have. In abundance. Our conscience, if it is still our conscience, eats at us when we do not do what God has called us to do. When it's working properly, it's doing exactly what it is supposed to do. Drive us. Not to despair, but to Christ. That's why the text doesn't just leave us with the knowledge of sin, but goes on and says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short, miss the mark of the glory of God, 
and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness for the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. That's what today is all about. And I don't mean Reformation Sunday, although it's just nice how that works out. But every Sunday, we come here to gather around the Word and hear that God sent His Son to make you His own. You are justified. You are now in Christ Jesus. For the very righteousness of God is Christ. For the whole Bible is about Him. You've heard me say that many times, and I will continue to say it, but from Genesis to Revelation, who do we hear about? Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and the names go on and on. Because as even Jesus tells the people in the Gospel of John, in their you think that you will find life. But these are about me. Ta-da! Yeah, that's it. All of Scripture is about Jesus. We all fall short of the glory of God. We know that. We already heard that. The law reminds us of that. But the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us Right? That $30 word there, propitiation. His blood has covered over us so that we have hope. So that we can sing the words that we have sung this morning already knowing that a price was paid. That our sins have been covered over and taken away and will never be seen again. Oh, the books will be opened. But those aren't the books of Santa Claus, right? Naughty and nice. No. The Lamb's Book of Life is where the names of the saints are written. Yours and mine. And all who have walked in the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ brought into Him through the waters of holy baptism and hearing of the Word that He has given to us. That's what the Reformation was all about. Dragging the church, sometimes kicking and screaming, back to the Word. The only hope that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. For without Jesus, there is no hope. Without His shed blood, there's nothing for us. We're lost. There is nothing to rejoice over. There is no righteousness that we may live in if Jesus doesn't die and rise for us. But see, that's why that verse 21 says, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Your sins have been taken away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, you still know that you're a sinner. You already said that this morning in your confession. And each day that we do the exact same thing, But that's where we get to hear that but again. But your sins have been forgiven. The absolution is ours. God is the justifier. That's why we get to leave church not with the burden of the law upon us. Unless it is. But Lord willing, then we have heard that Christ's death and resurrection 
has made us righteous. Which is why he concludes, he says, then what becomes of our boasting? It's excluded. It doesn't exist. By what kind of law? By a law of works? Nope. By law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. See, you're not here this morning around the word that God has given you because you're a good person. Because of the things that you did this week. Helping whatever. You know, the works that we do as Christians. Those good works we do because we get to. That's why he says, what do we have to boast about? Nothing. The only reason I am a child of God, that you are a child of God, that every Christian is a Christian, is because of the Father's love for His world. That Jesus Christ came into to save. Because again, what have we done to save ourselves? Nothing. You can't save yourself. It had to come from outside of us. Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's why we're worshiping again today. That's why we look forward to gathering together in the house of God with fellow Christians. Because we get to hear the message of our salvation. That it's not dependent on me. Thanks be to God for that. But it's dependent on Him. Even your faith, right? We're justified by faith. Apart from works of the law. Your faith. What did you do to get faith? Nothing. You received it. God-given faith in Christ Jesus. See again, faith always has an object. And for us, as Christians, true faith is in Christ Jesus. No one else. No thing else can we believe in that gives us what He has. That's why our confidence is not in ourselves. Can't be. It can only be in Him who has given us life. Our confidence is in Christ. If it ever turns to us, we're wrong. Faith. God-given faith allows us to know that we have been saved. Today, tomorrow, for the rest of our lives as we continue in what He has called us to be, His own, His family, His children. Not by works. Those come because we get to. But by faith. Alone. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In His name, Amen. Will you please rise as we join together this morning the confession of our Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. We confess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again 
according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for your gift of your dear Son, and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us, that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, and that faith in you may be strengthened, love toward others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to the Mayor and the Board of our village, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions and the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Especially, Father, we ask that you will be with the families of Elizabeth Stringing, who died this past week and whose funeral is tomorrow. Gracious Lord, continue to be watching over them and bless them. Gracious Lord, we ask that you will also be with Ken Hagen as he remains in hospital. Allow the doctors and nurses to use their skills to their highest ability and be a blessing to him as only you can do. And Father, we give you thanks and praise with Diana Gibson, who had surgery also this past week. We thank and praise you now for her time of rehabilitation. Be a blessing to her and allow it to be speedy and successful. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you will grant this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Call all needed fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Continue also to be with our farmers during this continued harvest. Give success to the Christian training of the young and to all lawful occupations on land, sea, and air, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, crowning them with your blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls, our talents, together with the offerings we bring before you. For by his blood your Son has purchased us to be your own, that we may live under him in his kingdom. These and whatsoever the things you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you, O Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together now in the singing of the offertory. Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, that we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive now the blessings of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. Just a few brief announcements this morning before we join together in singing our closing hymn. Just a reminder, this coming Wednesday, following Wednesday school from 7.30 8 o'clock, we'll be doing music, getting ready for Christmas. So it is important that you're able to stay and attend for that for those children who will be uh, doing the worship, uh, Christmas Eve service as well as that. Uh, so 7.30 8 o'clock, there will be music. Also, in this announcement, Autumn McCormick will be having a Christmas decorating meeting on November 6th at 2 p.m. in the Social Hall at Church for anyone that wants to be on the decorating committee. So that's November 6th, which is hard to believe, but next Sunday at 2 p.m. in the Social Hall. And then, of course, like I said, 7.30 to 8 o'clock next, this coming Wednesday, rather, is the beginning of service, uh, singing for Christmas Eve. So, enough of that. Let's go on to our closing hymn then, our recessional hymn, hymn number 582.